Coming up, a new low in the recent spike in subway crimes right here in the city. The vile attack caught on camera. Now, police say they know who's behind it. Timing out some rain or snow showers before we get to see our next warm up. And get ready for some yummy comfort food in Queens. New York Live's taking us to this new restaurant that puts a modern spin on family dishes. Hey, what's up and welcome back. Happy March 1st. I'm Kay Ingram and this is News for Now. Now, first up, there's been a huge break in a disgusting subway attack that's shocking our city. Police say they've arrested the man responsible for shoving a bag of human feces into a woman's face and hair last week at the 241st Street Station in the Bronx. His name is Frank Abroqua. He was taken into custody Monday, and as for the victim, we're told she was just coming home from work, minding her business, when she was attacked at random. Mayor Eric Adams says violence like this must stop. That's a horrific experience for anyone uh, to go through. And, you know, human ways, someone spitting in your face, uh, you know, those are real signs of mental health issues. Abroqua is charged with forcible touching, disorderly conduct, menacing, and harassment. The victim is still in the hospital undergoing testing to make sure she's healthy to return home. Also new, the family of a Queens woman killed in a brutal rock attack is taking on the growing violence against Asian Americans. 62-year-old Guy Ying Ma was sweeping a sidewalk in November when a man who had been sleeping there attacked her with a rock. She spent months in a coma and died from her injuries last week. When this incident happened, I'm, I was very, very saddened. This violence that we have seen against our API community over the past two years uh, is really despicable and disgusting. And we come together to continue to condemn it. A GoFundMe page to help her family with expenses has raised nearly $200,000. The case against Andrew Cuomo appears to be crumbling. Cuomo's team released a new TV ad that started airing across the state today. It highlights the decisions of five district attorneys to not bring criminal charges against the former governor. Now, if you remember, he faced claims of sexual misconduct and harassment, allegations he's always denied. And Attorney General Letitia James, whose investigation led to Cuomo's resignation, also weighed in. James said, quote, the only thing Andrew Cuomo has proven himself to be is a serial sexual harasser and a threat to women in the workplace. No TV ad can change that. Now, switching gears, peak fares. Remember those? Well, they're back on the Long Island Railroad and Metro North. Like most things, they were suspended back in the early days of the pandemic. Good news is some discounts are still available for riders. A new 20 trip ticket will save you 20% on peak fares. And there's a 10% discount on monthly passes. Now, if you're traveling during off peak hours within New York City stations, it'll only cost you five bucks. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4, meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Pretty quiet start to March overall. A little breezy, a little on the cool side, a little gray, and that will continue on into tonight. By later on this evening, the wind should be easing, so not as gusty, not as brisk, but we stay just as cloudy. And look at the temperatures, as steady as they get. The low to mid 40s, at least until about midnight. We could see a few showers. We're waiting on a front to come on through, and that's going to cool us down by tomorrow morning, but again, could bring us a few spotty showers. Notice far northern counties, those areas in blue, some snowfall flakes mixing in as well, but overall not a lot to it, so impact will be low. And by tomorrow morning, skies will clear, so the first half of Wednesday will be on the sunny side. But yes, temperatures will drop a bit by tomorrow morning. 36 for the low in the city, 30s from White Plains and Bridgeport for Long Island down the shore. North and west, temperatures staying in the mid-20s. Now, if you haven't had lunch yet, good because we are headed to a new spot that's serving up some pretty bomb comfort food. But these are not your mama's mashed potatoes. No, New York Live is here to take us to Queens. Hit it. One of our favorite chefs, Dan Kluger, has opened a restaurant in Long Island City. It's called Penny Bridge, and we're here to check it out. Dan, it's so great to see you. It's been too long. Nice to see you as well. Tell me all about Penny Bridge. What will we find here? It's 
I think a little blend of nostalgic menu items and American classics done our way. Casual, good service, good food, good booze. The menu's kind of broken into, in my mind, sort of two categories. One, which is trying to be best in class. We make mozzarella sticks with local cheeses from the farmer's market. We have the uh, nachos, which everything's seasonal. So right now, this is a butternut squash salsa with a butternut puree, which is almost kind of like a refried beans. We did a strawberry salsa, peach salsa. Uh, and then we have the things that, to me, are inspired by a classic item, uh, whether it's a diner classic or an American classic. And so this one is actually, um, it's a slow roasted chuck steak, but it's inspired by my father's meatloaf. It's covered in this barbecue sauce that we make and it's bacon on top of it, and then spinach and herbs, and then it's potato chips for, for texture. Let's not forget the fried chicken. Fried chicken, mashed potatoes, hot sauce, and a little sort of uh, Asian for a cocky American style. Mm-hmm. All right, well, there's a lot to eat on this table, so we gotta do one bite and on to the next. Mm. Those nachos are awesome. That is so good. We ate all that food. <laughs> no, we didn't. I wish I could eat all of it. It was so good, but we had to leave some room for dessert. Tell me about what you have on the menu. So chocolate cake, uh, vanilla cream, just really simple orange and chocolate. Bananas Foster Sunday, kind of just a play on Bananas Foster. And then three cookies, Snickerdoodle, chocolate chip, and chocolate chocolate. It all looks delicious, and we can't not talk about these beautiful cocktails. Yeah, this is our version of a screwdriver. It's kind of like, call it tang, like it's, it's really <laughs> citrusy like a tang. Uh, this is our version of a Long Island City iced tea, Cosmo, Paloma. Mmm. Drop the mic. Nothing disappoints. As always, Dan, thank you for having us today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And finally, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has been the biggest story overseas. But as you've probably seen on your timeline or in conversations with friends, this crisis hits home. News Force Ida Siegel got a firsthand look at how the city is taking action in support of Ukraine. Check it out. An emotional night at the Metropolitan Opera. Before opening night of Don Carlos, the cast lined up on stage to sing the Ukrainian national anthem. The audience stood in solidarity. When I woke up this morning, I said, why don't we do the Ukrainian national anthem? General Manager Peter Gelb said the company agreed it was important to send a message. Center stage, 24-year-old company member Vlad Puyoski whose entire family is still in Ukraine. Oh, because I want to help my family and my country as much as I can, but I'm here and it's a hard moment. Vlad shed a tear as he walked off stage. I was trying to not cry because it's, it's, it's so emotional. The Met also announced it's severing ties with all performers and staff members who support Vladimir Putin. Getting the company ready for the last minute performance was not easy. Performers only learning the lyrics in the morning. Now with help from Vlad. Just about that we are brave people. We have our freedom and it's our country. And in some ways, a protest at the opera is more meaningful than any other kind. In Russia, it's a way of life. Uh, my counterpart at the Bolshoi is appointed by Putin. Um, so, you know, it's, it's everything in Russia. So the fact that the Met is sending a signal like this is very, I think, has extra meaning. The Met is hoping other arts institutions here in New York and around the world will follow suit, use their platform to take a stand. Meanwhile, Putin supporters will not be allowed back here until the fighting stops and they say restitution is made. Reporting from Lincoln Center, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. All right, friends, thanks for joining us. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on News for Now. See ya.